America, a Prophecy by William Blake The guardian prince of Albion burns in his nightly tent. Sullen fires across the Atlantic glow to America's shore, piercing the souls of warlike men who rise in silent night. Washington, Franklin, Payne and Warren, Gates, Hancock and Green, meet on the coast glowing with blood from Albion's fiery prince. Washington spoke. Friends of America, look over the Atlantic Sea. A bended bow is lifted in heaven, and a heavy iron chain descends link by link from Albion's cliffs across the sea to bind brothers and sons of America, till our faces pale and yellow, heads depressed, voices weak, eyes downcast, hands work-bruised, feet bleeding on the sultry sands, and the furrows of the whip descend to generations that in future times forget. The strong voice ceased, for a terrible blast swept over the heaving sea. The eastern cloud rent. On his cliffs stood Albion's wrathful prince, a dragon form, clashing his scales. At midnight he arose and flamed red meteors round the land of Albion beneath. His voice, his locks, his awful shoulders and his glowing eyes appear to the Americans upon the cloudy night. Solemn heave the Atlantic waves between the gloomy nations, swelling, belching from its deeps red clouds and raging fires. Albion is sick. America faints. Enraged the zenith grew. As human blood shooting its veins all round the orbid heaven, red rose the clouds from the Atlantic in vast wheels of blood, and in the red clouds rose a wonder o'er the Atlantic sea, intense, naked, a human fire, fierce glowing as the wedge of iron heated in the furnace. His terrible limbs were fire with myriads of cloudy terrors, banners dark and towers surrounded. Heat, but not light, went through the murky atmosphere. The King of England looking westward, trembles at the vision. Albion's angel stood beside the stone of night and saw the terror like a comet, or more like the planet red that once enclosed the terrible wandering comets in its sphere. Then Mars thou wast our centre, and the planets three flew around thy crimson disk. So ere the sun was rent from thy red sphere, the spectre glowed, his horrid length staining the temple long with beams of blood. And thus a voice came forth and shook the temple. The morning comes, the night decays, the watchmen leave their stations. The grave is burst, the spices shed, the linen wrapped up, the bones of death, the covering clay, the sinews shrunk and dried. Reviving shake, inspiring move, breathing, awakening, spring like redeemed captives when their bonds and bars are burst. Let the slave grinding at the mill run out into the field. Let him look up into the heavens and laugh in the bright air. Let the in-chained soul shut up in darkness and in sighing, whose face has never seen a smile in thirty weary years, Rise and look out. His chains are loose, his dungeon doors are open, and let his wife and children return from the oppressor's scourge. They look behind at every step and believe it is a dream, singing, The sun has left his blackness and has found a fresher morning, and the fair moon rejoices in the clear and cloudless night, for empire is no more. And now the lion and wolf shall cease. In thunders ends the voice. Then Albion's angel wrathful burnt beside the stone of night, and like the eternal lion's howl, in famine and war replied, Art thou not Orc, whose serpent formed stands at the gates of Enitharmon to devour her children? Blasphemous demon! 
antichrist, hater of dignities, lover of wild rebellion and transgressor of God's law. Why dost thou come to angels' eyes in this terrific form? The terror answered, I am Orc, wreathed around the accursed tree. The times are ended, shadows pass, the morning gins to break. The fiery joy that Urizen perverted to ten commands, what night he led the starry hosts through the wide wilderness, that stony law I stamp to dust, and scatter religion abroad to the four winds as a torn book, and none shall gather the leaves. But they shall rot on desert sands and consume in bottomless deeps to make the deserts blossom and the deeps shrink to their fountains and to renew the fiery joy and burst the stony roof. That pale religious lechery seeking virginity may find it in a harlot and in coarse-clad honesty the undefiled, though ravished in her cradle night and morn. For everything that lives is holy, life delights in life, because the soul of sweet delight can never be defiled. Fires inwrap the earthly globe, yet man is not consumed. Amidst the lustful fires he walks, his feet become like brass, his knees and thighs like silver, and his breast and head like gold. Sound, sound, my loud war trumpets, and alarm my thirteen angels. Loud howls the eternal wolf, the eternal lion lashes his tail. America is darkened, and my punishing demons, terrified, crouch howling before their caverns deep, like skins dried in the wind. They cannot smite the wheat, nor quench the fatness of the earth. They cannot smite with sorrows, nor subdue the plough and spade. They cannot wall the city, nor moat round the castle of princes, They cannot bring the stubbed oak to overgrow the hills, for terrible men stand on the shores, and in their robes I see children take shelter from the lightnings. There stands Washington and Payne and Warren with their foreheads reared toward the east. But clouds obscure my aged sight, a vision from afar. Sound, sound my loud war trumpets and alarm my thirteen angels. Ah, vision from afar, Ah, rebel form that rent the ancient heavens, eternal viper, self-renewed, rolling in clouds, I see thee in thick clouds and darkness on America's shore, writhing in pangs of abhorred birth, red flames, the crest rebellious, and eyes of death. The harlot womb, oft open in vain, heaves in enormous circles, now the times are returned upon thee, devourer of thy parent, Now thy unutterable torment renews. Sound, sound my loud war trumpets and alarm my thirteen angels. Ah, terrible birth, a young one bursting. Where is the weeping mouth and where the mother's milk? Instead, those ever hissing jaws and parched lips drop with fresh gore. Now roll thou in the clouds. Thy mother lays her length outstretched upon the shore beneath. Sound, sound my loud war trumpets and alarm my thirteen angels. Loud howls the eternal wolf, the eternal lion lashes his tail. Thus wept the angel voice, and as he wept, the terrible blasts of trumpets blew a loud alarm across the Atlantic deep. No trumpets answer, no reply of clarions or of fifes. Silent, The colonies remain and refuse the loud alarm. On those vast shady hills between America and Albion's shore, now barred out by the Atlantic Sea, called Atlantean Hills, because from their bright summits you may pass to the golden world, an ancient palace, archetype of mighty emperies, rears its immortal pinnacles, built in the forest of God by Ariston, the king of beauty, for his stolen bride. Here, on their magic seats, the thirteen angels sat perturbed, for clouds from the Atlantic hover o'er the solemn roof. Fiery the angels rose, 
And as they rose, deep thunder rolled around their shores, indignant burning with the fires of Orc. And Boston's angel cried aloud as they flew through the dark night. He cried, Why trembles honesty? And like a murderer, why seeks he refuge from the frowns of his immortal station? Must the generous tremble and leave his joy to the idle, to the pestilence that mock him? Who commanded this? What god? What angel? To keep the generous from experience till the ungenerous are unrestrained performers of the energies of nature, till pity is become a trade and generosity a science that men get rich by, and the sandy desert is given to the strong. What god is he writes laws of peace and clothes him in a tempest? What pitying angel lusts for tears and fans himself with sighs? What crawling villain preaches abstinence and wraps himself in fat of lambs? No more I follow, no more obedience pay. So cried he, rending off his robe and throwing down his scepter in sight of Albion's guardian. And all the thirteen angels rent off their robes to the hungry wind and threw their golden scepters down on the land of America. Indignant, they descended headlong from out their heavenly heights, descending swift as fires over the land. Naked and flaming are their lineaments seen in the deep gloom. By Washington and Payne and Warren they stood, and the flame folded, roaring fierce within the pitchy night before the demon red who burnt towards America in black smoke, thunders and loud winds, rejoicing in its terror, breaking in smoky wreaths from the wild deep and gathering thick in flames as of a furnace on the land from north to south. What time the thirteen governors that England sent convene in Bernard's house. The flames covered the land, they rouse, they cry. Shaking their mental chains, they rush in fury to the sea to quench their anguish. At the feet of Washington downfallen, they grovel on the sand and writhing lie, while all the British soldiers through the thirteen states sent up a howl of anguish, threw their swords and muskets to the earth and ran from their encampments and dark castles, seeking where to hide from the grim flames and from the visions of Orc in sight of Albion's angel, who, enraged, his secret clouds opened from north to south, and burnt outstretched on wings of wrath, covering the eastern sky, spreading his awful wings across the heavens. Beneath him rolled his numerous hosts, all Albion's angels camped, darkened the Atlantic mountains, and their trumpets shook the valleys, armed with diseases of the earth, to cast upon the abyss their numbers forty millions, mustering in the eastern sky. In the flames stood and viewed the armies drawn out in the sky, Washington, Franklin, Payne and Warren, Allen, Gates and Lee, and heard the voice of Albion's angel give the thunderous command. His plagues, obedient to his voice, flew forth out of their clouds, falling upon America as a storm to cut them off, as a blight cuts the tender corn when it begins to appear. Dark is the heaven above, and cold and hard the earth beneath. And as a plague wind filled with insects cuts off man and beast, and as a sea overwhelms a land in the day of an earthquake, fury, rage, madness in a wind swept through America, and the red flames of Orc that folded roaring, fierce around the angry shores, and the fierce rushing of the inhabitants together, the citizens of New York close their books and lock their chests. The mariners of Boston drop their anchors and unlaid. The scribe of Pennsylvania casts his pen upon the earth. The builder of Virginia throws his hammer down in fear. Then had America been lost, overwhelmed by the Atlantic, and earth had lost another portion of the infinite. But all rush together in the night in wrath and raging fire. The red fires raged, the plagues recoiled, then roll they back with fury on Albion's angels. Then the pestilence began in streaks of red across the limbs of Albion's guardian. The spotted plague smote Bristol's 
and the leprosy London spirit, sickening all their bands. The millions sent up a howl of anguish and threw off their hammered mail and cast their swords and spears to earth and stood a naked multitude. Albion's guardian writhed in torment on the eastern sky, pale, quivering toward the brain his glimmering eyes, teeth chattering, howling and shuddering, his legs quivering, convulsed each muscle and sinew. Sickening lay London's guardian and the ancient mitred York, their heads on snowy hills, their ensigns sickening in the sky. The plagues creep on the burning winds driven by flames of orc and by the fierce Americans rushing together in the night, driven over the guardians of Ireland and Scotland and Wales. They, spotted with plagues, forsook the frontiers, and their banners seared with fires of hell, deform their ancient heavens with shame and woe. Hid in his caves, the bard of Albion felt the enormous plagues, and a cowl of flesh grew o'er his head, and scales on his back and ribs, and rough with black scales all his angels fright their ancient heavens. The doors of marriage are open, and the priests in rustling scales rush into reptile coverts, hiding from the fires of orc that play around the golden roofs in wreaths of fierce desire, leaving the females naked and glowing with the lusts of youth. For the female spirits of the dead, pining in bonds of religion, run from their fetters reddening, and in long-drawn arches sitting, they feel the nerves of youth renew and desires of ancient times over their pale limbs as a vine when the tender grape appears. Over the hills, the vales, the cities, raged the red flames fierce. The heavens melted from north to south, and Urizen, who sat above all heavens, in thunders wrapped, emerged his leprous head from out his holy shrine, his tears in deluge piteous, falling into the deep sublime. Flagged with grey-browed snows and thunderous visages, his jealous wings waved over the deep. Weeping in dismal howling woe, he dark descended, howling around the smitten bands, clothed in tears and trembling, shuddering cold. His stored snows he poured forth, and his icy magazines he opened on the deep, and on the Atlantic sea white shivering leprous his limbs all over white, and hoary was his visage, weeping in dismal howlings before the stern Americans, hiding the demon red with clouds and cold mists from the earth, till angels and weak men twelve years should govern o'er the strong, and then their end should come when France received the demon's light. Stiff shudderings shook the heavenly thrones. France, Spain and Italy in terror viewed the bands of Albion and the ancient guardians, fainting upon the elements, smitten with their own plagues. They slow advanced to shut the five gates of their law-built heaven, filled with blasting fancies and with mildews of despair, with fierce disease and lust, unable to stem the fires of orc. But the five gates were consumed, and their bolts and hinges melted, and the fierce flames burnt round the heavens and round the abodes of men.